All right, guys, I'm here with JB, and we are in the, the design department. Uh, other companies might call it engineering. You've all heard of the eight wastes, but there's eight design wastes, or eight office wastes, if you will, that's more applicable. And so I'm gonna not waste any time. I'm gonna just let JB get to it. All right, we're here with JB, and he's the head of design, or as we might call him in the States, engineering. So uh, we're talking, tell me about Billy. Yeah, Billy's uh, one of our new hires. He is uh, completely new. To today's his first day, right? Yeah, today's his first day. He's completely new to engineering. He has pretty much got a, a passion for it that he wants to actually go out into the field here and, and do it. So but he, he's not sitting here. He's, he's not sitting here. Day one, he's, he's not sitting here. So we're Austin's sitting there now. That's where uh, Billy will be, will be sitting in probably uh, four weeks' time. So he's going to his customer's which is frame assembly, the wood area, uh, laser cutting, upholstery. He's going to spend time with them to really deeply understand the work before he gets into our processes. So in the design. internal customers. Yep, his internal customer. So his role as manufacturing engineer would be to, to serve them, making sure that they can uh, make the product as quickly as possible. And then if there's design changes that they have requested or brought up, uh, it's his idea to get those prototyped and, and tested. So you hire someone, it's their very first day, and it's gonna be a month before they even do, even arrive at the job that they're gonna be doing. And you believe in that so much because? Because we, and me, and everyone here, their feedback when they've actually went down to the floor and spent time with, we call the Gemba people, <laughs> the, the throughout the summit, and that has been the most deep learning. Up here, you can sometimes be disconnected from the, the process and really getting your hands dirty and. And it's how we learn. I know I learn by physically doing the process, physically uh, seeing how the laser cut's been used, how the folding the, of the metal works and how we weld things. That's how I learn. Now when you come up with a design and see something on a CAD model like these guys are doing here now, you can uh, very much easily relate it. Because you've made it. You spent the whole month as your customer. So when you come up here, you know how what you're designing impacts them. Yeah, exactly. So we now know that we need to give a little bit of clearance for a welding torch because we've been down there and know that a welding torch is uh, probably 30 mil uh, wide and we need to give that clearance. We know what processes we use for the air ratchets. We need to give that space. We know we shouldn't weld in this position because that'll be difficult. All these little nuances help to inform our design decisions and we get it done faster. As now this result. might be a strange question for people in seating matters, but I know it's gonna come up for some of the viewers. What do you say to someone who is say, oh, well, I went to university, why I'm not gonna go down there, or what do you say to that kind of uh, comment? We probably wouldn't hire someone that wouldn't want to go down into the shop floor, wouldn't be humble enough to spend time in the shop floor because they wouldn't be right here, they wouldn't fit into our culture. Right. What we're, we, our culture here is we help everyone. No one is better it's about than humility. Anyone. Humility. We have a society here that I'm not better than you, you're not better than me. We're both here to help and we want to get it out the chairs out to our customer as efficiently and uh, as high a quality as possible. And I only to, I'm going to talk about it a little bit more. And this is because as you were describing it, my first instinct from what most other people maybe watching this video might think is, man, I wish my engineering department would do that. You have a cultural problem. It's your fault as the owner or leader and you need to rectify that. And if you have those people that are in the engineering department, that maybe they've been there for 40 years, and, oh, I did that back in the day, I'm not gonna do it. I don't think that would ever fly in any of the exceptional companies, including this one, um, that are out there. And it's about starting with the people. Now, if you had someone, you might try to retrain. I mean, I would probably start with retraining, but this is a mature culture. Wherever you're starting, you'll probably have to go back in time and, and try to retrain the importance of it, right? Because, you know, super quick, super smart people often feel like the work is below them, and that's not right. I mean, that's the whole toy it away, go to the Gemba. Mm -hmm. You're gonna learn the most. The workplace is a teacher. Yeah, Gemba, 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 Gemba. Like we heard it countless times uh, over the, the past week. And uh, yeah, that's where uh, specifically designers sh should be. And even people in our accounts and um, the office would come out and train on the shop floor just so that they know the product deeply. Right, uh, if you're a customer service and someone calls in about a problem all the time, maybe go to where that product's being made so you have an understanding. Yeah, exactly. Um, myself, my own experience, I've been in every process um, in the factory and 
uh, I have a real deep understanding of the product and then because of that uh, I can help the customer with pretty much any query that comes up. And is there anything else you'd have for the viewers that uh, you'd want them to take away from visiting your department? I think one of the big ones uh, that me and you uh, spoke about were that in design our wastes are not exactly aligned with uh, the eight wastes of uh, Toyota production system. Because we're not uh, spending time doing repetitive tasks uh, on the shop floor, the guys here are being creative. Their value is when they come up with a really good idea. So we want to create the environment in here where they can thrive uh, and come up with those creative ideas. So real quick, so you're saying there's, there's the standard eight ways, which everyone should know, which is, so Darren over there, He's reaching forward for his mouse, that's a motion waste. Mm -hmm. Then he's moving his mouse around the screen, that's transportation and motion waste. Mm -hmm. You're saying it's great for Darren to know that. Mm -hmm. However, that's not where most of the time is wasted. Now, what if Darren makes a mistake? Let's say there's something that's out of spec. What kind of waste is that? Translate out, over to. Out of spec in terms of? Uh, something that actually makes it to production and it's incorrect. Yeah, so that would be a, a communication problem. So we have a communication waste where we probably how that would have came about was I haven't communicated correctly to Darren what the customer needs, what this prototype needs, and then that has eventually got to, to the customer. So you have six project waste, what, what are those? Uh, so if you want to come in here, yeah. I'll show them exactly. We'll All speak right. a little bit on those. So under communication is, is huge. So we could spend um, a lot of time fixing our, our motion waste, but really if we don't communicate well enough, the amount of waste that can be uh, generated downstream of design is huge. We say in design, this is where all the waste is generated. And if we adhere to all these um, and reduce them as much as possible, the, the waste that can be prevented is, is huge. Another one is underutilization of software. So we use very intelligent systems, um, SolidWorks, uh, PDM, AlphaCam, these systems that um, produce the information for, for factory and they're very, very intuitive. And if you don't uh, keep to the latest version or you don't delve in and try new things in these software, you'll, you'll never get to utilize them enough. So what we do is we always keep the most up-to-date version. We train on the software once a week so that we're really getting the best of it. So we can have a design that maybe duplicates uh, itself because we've learned of a new function on SOLIDWORKS and then we tie that in the Stream Deck uh, so that we can uh, utilize software. Over complexity, so this one came from a book that we read uh, on Apple, Insanely Simple, I would highly recommend. So one of the, their um, main philosophies is to make it simple. So the iPhone started off with buttons, the keypad went downstream. Now there's there's zero buttons and it's just a simple interface to use. So one of the, the biggest things uh, that we can spend time on uh, wastefully is designing something and improving something that shouldn't be there. So we try and keep it as simple as possible and um, less parts, very easy to, to use and very uh, intuitive. It's like German engineering versus Japanese engineering. Both high quality. One of them's super complicated. Mm -hmm. One of them very simple and easy to maintenance and will never break. Yeah. One of them break after 10 miles. Yeah, exactly. And we try to um, spend a lot of time in this. It takes a lot of time to reduce that complexity. Our minds automatically think complex is better, but it's the opposite. Making something simple is harder than making something complex. We found that. Uh, skills then, that obviously ties into the actual eight waste itself. We, we pulled that from there. So these guys uh, and, and my team specifically have immense skills and talent. Um, Gary, for example, is a, an artist and he paints and does graphic design outside of work and photography and, and things like that. So a perfect example of that was myself. I was designing a handset uh, graphic for our chairs and I've that's been typically my role, but that's not my uh, and so this skill. is stuff that's even just outside of just, I mean, this is yeah. what they came with. Yeah, the, the skill set they came with and they can they can bring to the table. So rather than just doing what your job title says, uh, we make it known what everybody's skills are. So Gary made it known to us that he's worked in user interfaces um, before on a previous role. And of course, Gary would be the best person to design our handset for us because he knows about user experience and user interface. So 
the, the design that he came up with was 10 times better than the design that I come up with right. and knowing that he can do that like he's the perfect person for that so the amount of waste that I was generating by a poor design Gary's reduced that because he's better at it uh, blog and creativity um, that's another immense one I said before that our value in design is when we're creating a product creating a uh, change in a design and you want people to come up with these good ideas so we need to create an environment where that can happen so we used to be down in the shop floor and we were very manufacturing led and we were getting interrupted you know, 100 times a day but we moved um, to the side into a quieter environment where we can hear ourselves think we've made a good environment in here where we can be creative and we actually hold creativity club uh, once a week where we come up with ideas and do exercises to kind of unleash your creativity. Um, that's, that's a massive one. And then delayed feedback in design projects, that's huge. Typically you would design a product, you would send it out to the customer and you wouldn't hear back in for, for a long time. But when you're waiting on that feedback, the project stop. So what we do is we consistently uh, send uh, information on the project live when we're doing it via WhatsApp and get the feedback straight away so that we're not coming to the end of a project and getting 100 pieces of feedback. We're really doing one piece flow in terms of communication and project feed feedback. And when we're designing a new chair from design concept to build, then we're, our process is typically six months, whereas normal companies is about a year. So because we've highlighted that delayed feedback is a waste, then we can we can do things faster and we make people aware of this we I, sometimes i would send a picture of this waste to someone who hasn't got back to me and says you're holding up this project be very crucial about it it's the same as uh, someone holding up uh, something in a production line uh, we're sitting here uh, folding our arms and uh, we're not getting anything done when the feedback isn't getting there on time wow it's huge guys i'm interrupting this video because i have an announcement i've got merch coming down the pipe so by the time you're watching this, maybe it's already here. And I've just created the membership section. You can have some cool emojis or GIFs. Check it out down below. I also have a link to my Patreon below. If you guys want to support me, if you like this kind of stuff, please, best thing you can do, share it with someone. Help me bypass the YouTube algorithm. Some dude behind a little piece of code can just sit there and whoop, videos disappear. But if you share it with someone you think it's value, we bypass all of that. Guys, thank you so much. If just a few of you, I mean just less than 1% of you, supported me at the lowest level, like three bucks a month or something, it would help me keep the channel alive. I appreciate it, you guys.